Hello, Hunters! This is Sheep Killer here, and welcome back to Pokemon Leaf Green version. On the last episode, we took on Lieutenant Surge's gym, and we caught some Pokemon I hadn't caught yet, and we also went through a route. And in this episode, we're going to be getting some things we were unable to get before, but we can't get them now that we have the HM for cut. So let's use it! There we go. And now we can enter this end of the Pewter Museum. Yeah, there's a whole extra room here. Now let's see what happens when you talk to this guy from behind. You can't sneak in the back way. Nice try, kid, but no. Oh, whatever. Do you know what Amber is? I guess. Amber contains the genetic matter of ancient Pokémon. There's a lab somewhere trying to resurrect Pokémon from Amber. Let's see what happens if we tell him no. No, I don't. Amber is actually sap. That gooey stuff that oozes from trees. The ancient sap fossilized over time to become rock-hard amber. Okay, what's this? There is a beautiful piece of amber in the clear gold color. Shh, listen! I need to share a secret with someone. I think that this chunk of amber contains Pokémon DNA! It would be a shattering scientific breakthrough if Pokémon could be resurrected from it. But my colleagues just ignore what I have to say. So I have a favor to ask. I want you to get this examined at a Pokémon lab somewhere. Receive the old amber from the man. Shh, get the old amber checked. Okay, and no, the lab he's talking about is not Professor Oak's lab. He's not going to say anything about the amber. That's the lab on Cinnabar Island that has been that people have been telling us about for quite a while. Hey, anyway, let's talk to these people. We have two fossils of rare prehistoric Pokemon. We've seen those already: Aerodactyl and Kabutops. If I'm not mistaken, the secrets of space, the mysteries of Earth. There are so many things about which we know so little. Let's spur us to study harder, not toss in the towel. The only thing you should toss. Well, how about Seismic Toss? Should I teach it to a Pokemon? Now let's see. Seismic Toss. Curtis and Bolt can learn it. I don't see reason to learn this move. I'm pretty sure everybody explained how Seismic Toss wor works. Is that so? I'm sure you'll be back for it. How it works is it does the amount of damage equals the user's level. And it's not going to be that strong on any of our Pokémon, so it's obviously not going to be good. Anyway, we're done in Pewter City now. All there was was the old Amber and the Seismic Toss. Anyway, yeah, now we can use Cut to get here any time. We no longer have to go through Rock Tunnel every time. Anyway, there is still quite a bit to get on Route 2. Let's first start off by entering this building. What do you have to say? A fainted Pokémon just has no energy left in battle. It can still use moves like Cut outside of battle. To be able to use those moves, it just can't fight other opponents. I'm looking for Pokemon Abra. Want to trade one for my Mr. Mime? This is why I wanted Abra on my party. There's an in-game trade where you can get Mr. Mime here. Let's trade him to Abra. Descend to Rayleigh. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the only way to get Mr. Mime in the game, so if you want Mr. Mime, you gotta do this trade. And here it is, Mr. Mime. Hey, thanks! And Mr. Mime is surprisingly a pretty good psychic type. We got a Tibbin nature, that's actually a really good nature for it. Wow! If I wanted to use Mr. Mime, this would be ideal. I don't know if natures are set on traded Pokemon, but that's still good nonetheless. Anyway, yeah, it's a pretty good Pokemon. It does it handles itself rather well offensively. So if you can't evolve Kadabra from the trade, then Mr. Mime is one of the good alternatives. Anyway, let's go through here using cuts. Now we're gonna go through here. Now that we're in here, let's talk to this guy first. Once a Pokemon or it's Flash, you can get through Rock Tunnel. Yep, that's why getting Flash is important, and let's talk to this person here. Hi, remember me? I'm one of Professor Oak's aides. If your Pokedex has complete data on, on 10 species, I'm supposed to give you a reward. Professor Oak can trust me with HM05 for you. So, let me ask you. Have you gathered data on at least 10 kinds of Pokemon? Yes, I've caught 30. Great, you've caught our own 30 kinds of Pokemon. Congratulations, here you go. And now we finally have... HMO5 Flash. Like that other NPC said, this helps us get through Rock Tunnel very easily. So, let's see who can learn. Our Mr. Mime that we just got can learn it. I guess we'll teach it to him, even though we actually could have 
taught it to Meowth. In fact, I am going to teach it to Meowth. There we go, now Meowth has Flash, and now there is yet another part of Route 2. And I believe this just has one item here, which is the Ether. Ether. Oh yeah, it's got another item here. It's got two items, forgot. And a, and a Parley's heel. Alright, so we're done with Route 2 now. We got all the items. We got the in-game trade for Mr. Mime, and we got the ATM for Flash. And we did everything in Pewter City as well, and that's really all the loose ends tied up around here, so I guess I'll meet you guys back in Cerulean City. Here we are, back in Cerulean City. And there is one more loose end to tie up, or about after getting the third badge. We did everything in Route 2 and Pewter City, and there wasn't anything to do in Viridian City or anywhere south of that. But if we go back to Bill's house, there is one more thing we can see. I think this actually unlocks after quitting the SSM, but I wanted to wait until now because we were doing other random things anyway. If we go to Bill's house, if you, like checking out, if you like checking out some of my rare Pokemon on my PC, go on, check out my PC. Before, we didn't want, our, our character apparently didn't want to see Bill's Pokemon collection, but now we can check out some of his rare Pokemon on the PC. His favorite Pokemon list, we get to see four different Pokemon here. There is Eevee, Flareon, Oh, not Eevee again. Jolteon. And Vaporeon. This is how you can get the... I can get Eevee and its three evolutions registered as seen in your Pokedex. Now, of course, you can get Eevee later. But that's just how you can get it and all of its evolutions registered as seen in its Pokedex right now. I don't know if they'll all be registered as seen in your Pokedex outside of trading without doing that. So that is a cool thing you might want to do. I mean, having them register the scene doesn't really do anything for you anyway. You don't really get rewards until you get a certain amount of Pokemon caught. But that's still pretty cool that you get to see Eevee and its three different evolutions right there. And yeah, Eevee is a normal, normal type Pokemon that evolves into many different Pokemon. In Generation 1, those three that were along with Eevee, Flareon, Jolteon, and Vaporeon, were the only ones. But later games have added more. Pokemon Gold and Silver added Espeon and Umbreon. Pokemon Diamond and Pearl added Leafeon Glaceon, and Pokemon X and Y added Sylveon. So yeah, Eevee just has so many different evolutions. So that's why it's a Pokemon with just a lot of potential, and a little oddish. That trainer had nothing of interest, just two oddishes and two Bell Sprouts. Took forever to defeat though, because King kept getting put to sleep. I didn't mention it before because we were talking about Eevee, but we're on Route 9 now, and this has quite a few items and a lot of trainers as well. And here's our first item here, TM40 Aerial Ace. That is a really good move. Kind of like Shockwave, it's a 60 base power move that never misses. And I actually don't want to skip you, but I want Curtis up front now. So let's battle, let's battle this guy with Curtis. Whoa, great, I was bored, eh? And yeah, my notes say that there's nine trainers on Route 9. Goodbye, Machop, and now Curtis... Does not grow to level 27 just yet, but at this Pokemon, he definitely will. Hello, Onyx. Onyx goes down thanks to a pointless critical, like always. And there he goes down. Getting quite a bit of experience from that, and Curtis grows to level 27. Hiker Jeremy, keep it coming, and oh wait, I'm out of Pokemon. Wow. How would you not notice that? Oh well. There are a few hidden items here as well, so we might run into a some of those along the way. Let's battle you first, though. Who's that walking with those good-looking Pokemon? Oh, a man with good taste. How nice. Now, what Pokemon do you have? And Growlithe. I'd still say you have good taste. Growlithe is pretty cool, and Arcanine is amazing. Not in my top ten, but definitely a really good Pokemon. Charmander. If you're going through the gyms, it's not a good Pokemon to start off with, but Charizard is still really awesome. So, yeah, I don't... I thought I might have to take back what I said about you, but I guess I don't. I don't take back anything I said. Out like a light. And you made puns and gave me $420. Oh my gosh, that, that is now my favorite NPC ever. I got up early every day to raise my Pokemon from cocoons. Oh, we know how this is going to go. He's going to have some fully evolved bugs. Bug catcher Brent Beedrill. I don't think we've actually fought against Beedrill before. I know we have fought against Butterfree, but I don't think we have fought against Beedrill. So let's just hit him with a Rock too. Should go down rather easily. Without its Mega Evolution, Beedrill's not a good Pokemon at all. I figured. And you're going to have another Beedrill or a Butterfree. Either way, 
We're not seeing you in action. B Zero goes down just like that, and Curtis goes to level 28. Wow, those Pokemon might, might not be very strong, but they get a lot of experience. And Bug Catcher Brett goes down. What? What a total waste of time. Yeah, you better get a Beedrill Light, otherwise your team is quite pathetic. Anyway, let's put Bold up front. We haven't seen him today, I don't think. And there is a hidden item right here. If I would jump. Here we are. Now, can I finally get this hidden item? Yes, I can. It's an Ether. There we go. There is a berry as well, so I better look around for a berry patch whenever that comes up. Let's head over here now. The berry might be over here. Oh, there's definitely an item over there. <laughs> Bring it on! Okay, sir. And that's actually the second exposed item in this place. There's two exposed items and three hidden items. So we're already gonna be done with all the exposed items in this place. And wow, what a great time to have Bolt out. Geodude goes down. What do you got next? Another Geodude or a Machop? One of the two. Oh, Onyx. Onyx goes down. And remember when Onyx took a lot of trouble to take down, unless he had a Grass or Water starter back in Brock's Gym, and now they're just pretty much pushovers to anything I have. Anyway, Hiker Allen was defeated. Ha 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 ha, you beat me fair. These hikers sure are in a good mood around here. Maybe because there's a burn heal right here, and he knew he better have it. Hello, Bug Catcher. Go, my Super Bug Pokemon! What could you possibly have that would be super? Oh, Venonat. That's something we haven't seen before, I don't think. But yeah, Caterpie and Weedle definitely weren't super. But at least Venonat's something we haven't seen in this playthrough up until now. And I don't think Venomoth's a terrible Pokemon by any means. So, hey. At least he has something that isn't bad. Still gets defeated by Bolt rather easily, though. But that's just because my Pokemon are really strong. My bugs. I didn't squish them, I shocked them, so I'm sure they're fine. What's up here? Well, we won't find out with this guy, will we? I'm taking the rock tunnel to go to Lavender. What do you got for me, Mr. Camp Pick Camper Drew? I almost corrected myself on something I was actually right about. During this battle, Bolt grew to level 29, and also whenever I went through my party, I saw Meowth has an item now. So we should go check that out once once we get through this, all this text here. Can't measure up. Yeah, so I think Meowth has the ability to pick up if he has an item now. Let's see. A rare candy! Whoa! And yeah, he does have pick up. I did not expect a rare candy out of that. If I'm not mistaken, that's one of the rare items you can get from pick up. So, looks like Meowth has a use other than HMs. Can't believe that. I'm gonna have me off on the team for a long time now. And yep, there's our berry here, the Chesto berry. That means we just have one more item left in this place. I don't know if I'll be able to find it. Oh wow, I actually did find it. Another rare candy. Unlike the one from Pickup, I actually expected that one though, because I did research. Haha, <laughs> aren't you a little toughy? Uh, you haven't seen that Pokemon yet, but you're right. And yeah, that's all the items for this place. I don't think we're done with the trainers quite yet, I could be wrong with that. But I don't think we're done with the trainers just yet. That is all the items, I am sure of that. And anyway, this Geo this Geodude goes down in one hit. I talked over it, so that didn't get edited out. But I don't even feel like I need to point out me editing things out anymore, because I've I've done it for so long for so many episodes now. It happens so often in episodes that I think it, it I think it would just be expected for for anyone that might be watching all the episodes. So I don't feel like I need to point it out anymore. The only times where I will leave with such battles are when I'm talking over it, or if it's in a, an important battle. Like a rival battle, or a gym battle, or what have you. And hell of a job. Another pointless critical. Can't have an episode without that. That's actually happened already in parts that I edited out, but you get the point. What's that? It's my Pikachu sweeping your entire team. Anyway, yeah, how many rare candies do we have now? I'm, I'm very sure I have a lot. Let's see. Five rare candies. That is crazy. And there's plenty of rare candies throughout the game. So we're just gonna end up end up with more. Well, we'll probably have a lot by the time the Pokemon League comes along. Don't you dare patronize me! Oh, you think just because I'm ignoring you and talking to my few viewers that I'm patronizing me? Oh, whatever you say. Meow. No, you're too much. Yep, that was the last of the trains on Route 9. But we still have a whole new route ahead of us. Complete with a new encounter two berries, a hidden item, and a few other things we need to do that aren't necessarily on this route. I'm pretty sure the hidden item is beyond this cut tree, if I'm not mistaken. Is it? 
Yep, it's right there. Super Potion. And now we can, we can go to the Pokemon Center and heal up. There's actually another Pokedex completion reward we can get here. Oh, the Cheap Car, I've been looking for you. It's me, one of the ever-present aides to Professor Oak. If your Pokemon has... If your Pokemon... I said it again! I caught myself saying that during editing last episode. And I just said it again there. It's Pokedex, not Pokemon. If your Pokedex has complete data on 20 species, I'm supposed to give you a reward for Professor Oak. You can trust me with this Everett Stone. Maybe that's why he said ever present a for aid for Professor Oak. So, let me ask you. Have you gathered data on at least 20 times Pokemon? I've gathered data on 30. And there we go with the Everett Stone. Make Pokemon evolve is cert certainly can add to the Pokedex. Now, at times you might not want a certain Pokemon to evolve. In that case, give the Ever Stone to that Pokemon. It'll prevent evolution, according to the Professor. Indeed, it will. I heard that Ghosts haunt Lavender Town. The types of Pokemon match up differently with each other. Every type is stronger than some types and weaker than others. And we'll talk to you. A nugget is totally useless, so I sold it for 5,000 Poké Dollars. Yes, yeah, you only use four nuggets. And now let's heal up here. And I don't think we have anyone to put in the PC. Yeah, we don't, so... We're going to explore as much of Route 10 as we can now. There is another part of it that we can't get to quite yet, but... Later on in the game we'll get to that. But for now... We're just going to do what we can here. And there's two berries on this route, like I said. There was one item, two berries. And we're going to get to two berries now. There's one, the cherry berry. That's always good to have, because my Pokemon get paralyzed a lot, apparently. And here's the next one, a person berry. And that's it for everything on this route besides the new encounter and this one trainer here. So, I'll go for the new encounter off screen, but I'll say what it is during this battle. I've been out at, po at, po at a Pokemon. I've been out at a Pokemon show a few times, but I always lose. Well, it sounds like you're not good at battling. You're definitely gonna lose to me. Picnic or Heidi. You gotta hit you. And here's that called Fairy here. Just, I, I didn't talk over it, but it used to follow me, which is completely useless when you're not in double battle. So yeah, that battle went about as what I expected. Oh, after all my training. Yeah, you had a Pikachu and Clefairy, and they got absolutely demolished by my team, and I didn't even go over the new encounter. I guess I could say it right now. It is Voltorb. It's, it's a pretty good Pokemon, despite what you might think from its design. It just looks like a Pokeball with eyes. And then its evolution is just bigger and it turns upside down, but it's still a decent Pokemon nonetheless. Its special attack is not bad and its speed is amazing, but I don't think it learns much for Electro-type moves in its naturally learned moveset, so you need TMs if you want Electro-type moves for same type attack bonus on it. So that's why it's not considered one of the better ones in this generation. But if you don't mind getting the TM for Thunderbolt, or if you just want to stick with Shockwave, Electrode is not a bad option at all. Of course, Raichu and Jolteon are objectively better options. Electrode still gets the job done rather well. And I believe it'll serve you well in a playthrough. Anyway, why am I backtracking here? Well, that's because there's an item I forgot to get. And we're going to go for it now. And I'll see you guys there because it's still quite far away. Here we are back in this place. And now that we have 30 Pokemon registered in our Pokedex, we can finally get the item finder from this aid of Professor Oak. And yes, we have data on exactly 30 Pokemon. Congratulations, here you go, we get the item finder. There are items on the ground that may be hidden from you. Use the item finder to detect any hidden items close to you. The machine is a bit limited, it can't pinpoint item locations. What it does show is the direction where the item is. Use it to get your bearings, then search the suspect area by hand. So, this is a really good item to have. Before we had to just try to guess where hidden items were, but with the item finder, it now becomes a lot easier to find hidden items. I can see where the general locations of those hidden items are from from guides online, and then instead of having to track it down myself, I can use the item finder to find it a lot more easily. We did quite a bit today, and I feel like that is about it for now. I'll see you guys in the next episode, where we are going to make our way through Rock Tunnel. Now that we have HM for Flash, it shouldn't be that bad. So yeah, next time we're going to do all that. It is quite a long game, though, so even though we will be able to see, it's still going to be an entire episode of just that game. So yeah, I'll see you guys then. Happy hunting. <laughs>